Welcome to the Houston Methodist Cabbage and Valve Discharge Teaching Medication video. This video is designed to provide guidance for teaching discharge medications for your cabbage and valve patients. Hello, my name is Kaylee and I'm a clinical pharmacist here at Houston Methodist mm -hmm. and I'm going to teach you about your heart medications. Okay. Your doctor is sending you home on some new medications uh, that I want to discuss with you. I would like to go over each one of them with you, answer your questions, and make sure that you know how to safely take them once you go home. Okay. I will provide you with some printed information and then we'll go over your discharge uh, medication schedule as well. First, let's go over the medication schedule from your discharge paperwork. This first section here provides a list of new medications and we'll go over them individually. The next section are actually medications that you were taking at home that we didn't make any changes to. The third section here are medications uh, that you were taking at home but we have changed since you came into the hospital. And then the last section here will be medications that you will stop after you go home. Your doctor has prescribed a medication called a beta blocker. Several beta blockers, but each of them are slightly different. Metoprolol, which is also known as Lopressor or Toprol, and Carvedilol, which is also known as Coreg, are the two most commonly prescribed beta blockers after heart surgery. Other beta blockers include Nabivalol, Atenolol, and Bisoprolol. Beta blockers are used to help control your heart rate, and they prevent you from developing an abnormal rhythm. They also help uh, reduce the amount of work your heart has to do. Depending on the type of beta blocker that you are prescribed, you may take it once or twice a day. Just be sure and follow your doctor's instructions for the medication. Uh, you can take this medication with or without food, um, and you can take it along with your other medications as well. Possible side effects include dizziness, decreased energy, and reduced heart rate and blood pressure. Rare but serious side effects include passing out an abnormal heart rhythm, shortness of breath, fluid retention, or weight gain. Please let your doctor know if you experience any of these side effects. If you are diabetic, symptoms of low blood sugar may not be as clear while you're taking a beta blocker, so it's very important that you monitor your blood sugars closely. Do you monitor your blood pressure and your heart rate at home? Not now, but I can. It's always a good idea to monitor your blood pressure and your heart rate um, at home. So before you take your beta blocker, you would check your blood pressure and your heart rate. If your heart rate is less than 50 beats per minute, or if your systolic blood pressure, which is that top number, is less than 100, then don't take your medication at that time. Maybe wait 30 minutes to an hour or so, and recheck your blood pressure and your heart rate. And if your numbers are okay, then take your medication. If they're still low, don't take it. And be sure and tell your doctor if you have to skip more than one dose. It's best to keep a written record of your blood pressure and your heart rate and take it with you to your follow-up appointments. Also, take your blood pressure uh, cuff with you as well so that they can check to make sure that it's reading accurately. Will this pill make me tired? Some people do feel fatigued when they start a beta blocker, but it just takes a little time for your body to get used to it, and then your doctor may adjust your dose based on your symptoms. So that's why it's really important to keep a record of your blood pressure and your heart rate and your symptoms so that you can discuss that at your appointment. Okay. I'll take, if I have any questions, I'll ask my cardiologist on my scheduled follow-up appointment. I do want to make sure that we have the correct pharmacy on file so that your prescriptions can be sent electronically. Is this correct? Yes, it's correct. Okay, good. <laughs> So some pain medications require a paper prescription that you take to the pharmacy to have filled. Please ask your nurse if you have one of these prescriptions because you'll need to take it to the pharmacy to be filled. Okay, I can do that today because I'm gonna go pick up my prescriptions anyway. So now that we've reviewed all of your medications, let's review the schedule in your discharge paperwork. This schedule shows a list of all the medications you should be taking and the times of the day that you should be taking them. As we go down this list, let me know if there's any medications you're not familiar with. Okay. Take the time to review the medication schedule with your patient and answer their questions and concerns. Confusion about medications is a common complaint from patients and it can increase their risk of readmission. 
Taking the time to review the medications now can help prevent complications and non-compliance. I do want to make sure that you understand what each medication is for and how to safely take it at home. Can you tell me when you're supposed to take your Plavix and what it is for? Okay, according to this, I take the Plavix once a day in the morning and it's a blood thinner to keep my blood flowing through my new bypasses. Exactly. It's important to assess your patient's level of understanding by using the teach back method. Asking open-ended questions will help you determine any gaps in learning. For your safety, it is important that you take your medications as prescribed by your doctor. If you have any questions or concerns, please do call your doctor. Do you have any questions right now about your medications? No, ma'am, I think you've covered everything. And if I do have questions, I'll call the doctor. Oh, wonderful. Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you, and thank you for choosing Houston Methodist. Nice meeting you, too. Thank you.